Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stock Market Brief Show. This is where your furus tend to blow up. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. I'm doing it a little differently. Don't have a chart deck, so we're going to be going through Thinkorswim and some of the other trading platforms. Keeping it quick to the point, because I'm watching my baby, and he is currently sleeping. Let me know in the comments below if you hit that thumbs up by leaving a smiley face, and if you have notifications turned on. If you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn them on to get notified when we post these videos. Also, there's a link in the pinned comment. Make sure to click that link. It's to my Patreon. You can sign up as a free member or paid member, which there's a lot of benefits, but I do send out midday update videos about five to six minutes long. Okay, so let's take a look at the heat map. Clearly, we have a some quite significant sell side coming out of tech, big ones of the likes of NVIDIA and even Meta being down 5.68% on the trading session. Pretty wild day. If I look at the advanced decline line for the NASDAQ 100, you can see, well, there's actually 65 advancing stocks, 36 declining stocks here. So a lot more capital flowing out, but yet there's a lot of stocks that were actually up. So are we going to actually come into a period where we start to see more correlation to the downside? Or is this just a one-off where they're eventually going to catch a bid and we're going to go back into a positive correlated state? Well, we'll touch on that. We'll look at some key levels and some charts. But more specifically, let's get into today's expected moves going into tomorrow. This is why I say this is where your furus can get chopped up, right? People that have been on a big winning streak but aren't willing to adapt to changing market conditions typically tend to keep the same size of their positions and they keep pushing, they keep pushing. And when things change, they don't let off the gas. And right here should tell you all you need to know. The S&P 500 daily expected move going into tomorrow is 3.86. For the Qs, 5.75. This implied move for the Qs on a daily basis is the size of typically a weekly expected move. Today alone, the Qs hit over a three standard deviation move to the downside. This is where we start to see wild swings in the market. Okay, we talked about IWM yesterday. So let's tag back up on IWM because we talked about how this is where you got to be careful. Implied volatility is rising with the price action going up to the upside. And we called out a few charts and we basically said, watch out here. Now, this was only down 1% on the day, but this was all the way up to 226 and dropped right back to where it opened to 220. Two. So this is what I mean by high implied volatility. You can see massive swings in either direction. And if you're not adjusting sizes, positioning, or you keep averaging into losing trades, you can get ripped to shreds in this environment. Now, the market conditions, they're starting to change. They haven't fully yet, but they're starting to change. So let's take a look at the S&P 500. What do I mean by starting to change? Well, we're getting below the five-day moving average. Okay, the five-day moving average is neutral. So this is where things get bearish, but with caution because we're not actually declining quite yet. We actually really haven't put in a lower high yet. This would be the high. We haven't really seen a bounce yet to put in a potential lower high and a lower low. This would be the lower low that I'd be kind of focused in on. Now, as price is pulling down, I want you to also realize we, we're still pretty far off the weekly expected move. Going into tomorrow's trading session, we have the daily expected moves in this range. And if we do tag lower daily expected move tomorrow, we will be roughly at that lower weekly expected move. Now, this blue line on your screen is the anchored volume weighted average price from the July low. Basically, the start of July was where we saw that low. So what does that mean? It means that the average buyer based off of this this the start of the month we're just going to say the start of the month is basically based off the time and volume volume is basically break even we're slightly in the green all this right got taken out with this basically this move right here based off of based off of just this indicator um anchored i'm just gonna say twop this time weighted average price so if we get below this and then the average person who bought this month that would enjoy this entire ride up basically straight up if we get below it, now the average person is underwater, which you can see from a psychological shift how that may matter, okay? But we're not there yet. So below the five-day moving average, but take, take a look here. The gamma flip line currently is at 5580. We'll see if that updates tomorrow. Now, being in positive gamma territory, this means dealers look to buy the dip, sell the rip, buy the dip, sell the rip. And what we're seeing right now is a lot of pinning type of sideways action. And this is what we actually talked about way back over here, right? We said, 5650 or 5500 if we come into those levels i'd expect to see some chop back and forth and in fact i didn't show it on this chart i showed it on this chart where we'd go pinning back like that and that's exactly what we're doing now we do have an option expiration coming into friday which we have 
we'll see here. Yeah, 719. We have a, a lot of gamma rolling off, okay? And the specific strikes that it's going to be coming off of, we'll take a look here. Yeah, 5650 is going to be a big one. So a lot of that gamma is going to be rolling off there. So when I look at this, we're going to have a lot of this gamma roll off. So we're going to have to see whether or not traders continue to reach higher. And it's going to potentially unpin this pinning action to get a more, you know, steady of a move that we've seen, you know, in the past when we started breaking up to the upside. So above the gamma flip line, that's positive. Okay, but below the five day moving average, it's it's warrants caution. So right now, implied volatility is increasing. We're, not, we're pretty darn close to the gamma flip line. I think this is the time to just be cautious and careful because you can get rip your faces right back. So if you start shorting early, just be careful because you can you can you can blow right back up to 5650 in a matter of moments. And also on the flip side to that, if we start breaking down from the gamma flip line, that opens the door obviously lower there too as well. So I'd say bullish above this area right here. And if we get back below it, it'd be bearish. And we'd say bullish probably towards 5650. And then I'd probably let off the gas there if we get a bounce. We're just looking at this specific chart. Now, if we do start bouncing tomorrow, I would just keep an eye on that upper monthly expected move and upper daily expected move for the SPY. Now, if I take a look at the IWM on the 15 minute time frame, we're still above the week to day anchored volume weighted average price. We're above the quarterly expected move and outside of the weekly expected move. So even if this were to come in, right, it was a pretty, pretty crazy day today from a, you know, gap down to rip up higher to coming right back down to the lows. Pretty impressive day. Okay, so to see this consolidate would make some sense. But if we do get follow through, just keep an eye on these lower levels over here because it is still technically in a bullish trend. We'll take a look at the cues really quick just to follow up what we talked about when we said we talk about breaking this low. Be careful because that means it's a lower high and a lower low, which we just got trading outside of that weekly expected move. Now, if we start to see continued sell side, take a look at the lower daily expected move, 476.02. The higher probability is that we come back to the upper weekly expected move and try to put in a lower high, right? The five-day moving average is now starting to curl over. So we have a low, lower low, a, sorry, a high, a lower high, a low, and a lower low. So if we bounce, just be aware, where can we run into potential you know, resistance? I'll keep an eye on the week-to-day anchored volume weighted average price, the five-day moving average, and of course, the daily expected move right there at 487. So wherever these come in, right? It could be just riding around this zone on a potential bounce up if that's the case. And if we start pressing back down, then we'd have to watch for a new low to form. So that is a time to be very careful here in the queues with that, that expanding volatility. Now, another chart that I found interesting, if we take a look at like, as far as sectors go, energy saw a pretty nice bid today to the upside. And we're going to touch back on that. And then consumer staples there too, as well, saw a pretty nice bid to the upside breaking out of this consolidation. Now, the reason why I want to touch on energy, right? Even financials, even financials is breaking out to these highs. Look at this thing take off. One of the charts that we're actually keeping a close eye on was Berkshire Hathaway. And just look at that breakout, right? Contraction leads to expansion. So if you're in this trade, right? Just be mindful. Implied volatility is increasing here too as well. So update your stops, take partial profits and so forth as you see fit. But the reason why I want to talk about energy is because energy, when it outperforms the S&P 500, right? There's been typical weakness and vice versa, actually. When the energy relative performance line goes down, S&P 500 typically goes up, right? Goes down, S&P goes up. But what happens when the line goes up? Well, the S&P 500 has seen weakness. And the reason I'm calling out now is, are we going to potentially start seeing the relative strength line between energy and S&P 500 go up? And if so, does that mean we're going to see a pullback to consolidation here in the S&P 500? On deck for tomorrow, we got some Fed speak, so not much going on over there. And then as far as earnings go, we'll look at the S&P 100 days to earnings over here. I think we have Abbott, if this already potentially reported or reporting in the morning. And then we have Netflix on deck after that. This is, when is this? Uh, Netflix is tomorrow after the close, I think, 718. Yeah, so tomorrow after the close, we have Netflix. And if I take a look at Netflix, it doesn't look too bearish, right? We're in this up channel. You know, unfortunately, earnings is right around the corner, but you know, we saw a little bit of a hammer candle today. It's wedging right here. So a breakout might take this thing right back up here. It's just unfortunately, you know, going into earnings, it's a binary event. You can't really tell what it's going to quite do. Now, another thing that I found interesting on today's price action to close it off is just the 10-year yield. It is coming off, continued to come off here, and the market went down. 
And being that this is could be getting a little oversold to the downside, we may get a technical bounce in the near future, which is what I said on the prior video. And if that is the case, typically that's actually good for energy stocks. And it's actually not good for continued, not good for things like tech, which we've seen relative weakness in tech when these when the 10-year yield rises. And then on top of that, the dollar. And the dollar came off pretty hard fast today too, more and more significantly to the downside. And yet things like like gold didn't do all too amazing in my opinion. It was flat on the trading session over here, slightly down on the trading session with a falling dollar. So, you know, this is interesting because there's a typically a negative correlation. Correlations always change, but if the dollar does start bouncing here, this is setting up for gold to come in a little bit. We saw silver come in actually quite a bit today too, 3%. The miners, the ones that I've been tracking here pretty closely came in quite a bit here today after t yesterday's run up. And there's typically a tight correlation or silver. So I still think that there's a possibility that this makes its way down to potentially back test some levels in the near future. Um, I went a little bit longer than I expected, but that's all I got for you on today's episode. Hope it gives you some insight. See you later.